Welcome to Coffee with Citroen Cooperman. I'm your host, Mayor Mintz. Coffee with Citroen Cooperman is a video series in partnership with Commercial Observer that features engaging interviews with esteemed real estate executives. The purpose of the series is to delve into pressing matters affecting the industry and their respective businesses. Today, I'm joined with Marianne Gilmartin, the founder and chief executive of MAG Partners. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Happy to be here. So I know we're filming in one of your new buildings, the Ruby, and it's a 480 unit building and you guys did this at probably the hardest time to develop real estate. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the building and a little bit about what excites you? Sure. Ruby is a really special building for MAG Partners. It's uh, the first building that will come online under the MAG Partners name and it's the work of almost a half a decade. And in many ways it speaks to how challenging it is to build anything ground up in New York. This one in particular was designed and put together right before the pandemic. And all of our financing was in place, we're ready to start construction, and March of 2020 happened. And uh, all of the conventional lenders dried up, and it was a challenge in so many ways, um, a challenge to keep the capital partners focused on proceeding into construction, a challenge to get lenders to step up, and above all, um, really a challenge to convince people that New York was going to come back and that writing its obituary uh, would be a mistake. And again, having been around a long time, as you have been, uh, we've lived through many, many challenges. And um, what's beautiful about this building is it represents New York's resiliency and the fact that you can never um, uh, count New York out. So I know you started leasing pretty recently. How's the leasing going in this market? So we're all reading about what's happening with rents in New York City, and uh, this building's um, no exception. In fact, we are leasing units as quickly as they're being made available through the TCOs. Uh, we've been open only 45 days and have leased over 50 units, and um, we're leasing them above our projections. And so again, it, uh, it's really a pleasure to have built the building um, through the pandemic and have it be uh, yet again a great representation of the strength of New York City's economy and, uh, and um, the desire for young people to, to live in New York, in particular uh, West Chelsea, where um, many, many people want to live. This building sits in the heart of West Chelsea and it has many beautiful attributes. So where did you get the name of this building from? Ruby is the name of a fashion designer um, from Bermuda and she had a fairly outsized impact on the fashion industry but was never properly recognized. And in thinking about what we would call the building, uh, many folks in the industry name buildings after family members. Uh, that was a non-starter for me. And together with the team, we talked about um, how we could have this building pay tribute to the Garment Center and what happened here for, for decades. And so uh, Ruby Bailey is um, the inspiration for this building. We approached the, her estate and we're get, we got the support from the family and the estate to name the building Ruby. And we will also um, begin a scholarship fund at FIT in her name. So what about the other two buildings? I know you have two of them under development now. Why don't you tell us a little bit about those? So together it's a thousand units of housing, which is very important today um, as New York City continues to face a housing crisis. But 335 8th Avenue is around the corner. I call it the, the little sister to Ruby. It is a smaller building in terms of its units. It's under 200 units and it's approximately seven stories. Uh, we made news recently because we signed Lidl, the supermarket, for 23,000 square feet. Um, it is a food desert in West Chelsea, uh, and it's um, really amazing that a supermarket would commit to a location before a shovel has been put in the ground. And that tells you a little bit about um, the crisis of supermarkets in New York City, which uh, in some ways is as, um, as compelling as the housing crisis. So that will be a tenant in the base of the building, and we will design the building very much in keeping with the spirit of what we've done here at Ruby. 335 8th Avenue is where the tennis bubble used to exist in New York City in the Grisides. Many people know the property along 8th Avenue because of that. Uh, it is known as now 335 8th Avenue. We're preparing for demolition and we'll go into construction in the summer. Uh, that program again will be built under the old 421A Affordable New York uh, real estate program. And what about 50th Street? So 50th and 2nd Avenue, um, 300 East 50th Street, uh, is another property just under 200 units. 
um, different market altogether. Um, certainly the Upper East Side is alive and well, and we're excited to have a property there where we can build 70% uh, market and 30% affordable under the old program. This building, again, is vested, just like 335 8th Avenue, which means the footing is in, which allows us the right to build the building under the former tax program. Uh, without that program, as you're well aware, you cannot build uh, multifamily housing in New York, and there is no affordable um, uh, component if you if you don't have the 421A program. So these are really going to be among the last two that will be built in New York City. So we're proud of the contribution we're making with over a thousand units, um, but it is uh, unfortunate because um, both of these buildings represent um, a response to a dire need in New York City for housing, housing of all types luxury housing, moderate housing, middle income, and low income housing. Um, but that building again will be will meet the market. It'll be designed and appointed with all the same elements that people want today, which is um, access to the outside, uh, biophilia, um, generous closets, and um, beautiful amenity spaces. So I know you've been involved in New York real estate for, let's just say, quite some time. Now all of a sudden you're going down to Baltimore. Why the change? One of the things that MAG Partners is known for is um, building in places where maybe others don't see opportunity or dealing with complexity, extreme complexity. Just about two years ago, we went down to Baltimore. And again, we thought long and hard about whether it made sense. I can tell you I do not like exporting talent, and it's uh, a very intense boots on the ground business. So the idea that we would be in a different market was concerning, but it's a train right away. And so something along the Acela Corridor was always attractive, somewhere between Boston and DC. So we spent a lot of time, about six months, um, learning about the market and the players. Uh, Kevin Plank and his family office, Sagamore Ventures, is partnered with Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs Urban Investment Group, and the sponsorship is top notch. Um, the property is close to 250 acres, and the entitlement is as generous and as expansive as you can imagine. We are um, in it for the long haul. It is likely a 10-year undertaking. It's 14 million square feet of total, total building, and we're really excited about things to come. In just six months, we have rebranded the project. It was known as Port Covington. We've named it Baltimore Peninsula. We have leased uh, over 100,000 square feet of commercial space in this market, in a market that in total is about 14 million square feet of commercial space. And we've opened up um, close to 500 units and inviting residents to come and live at Baltimore Peninsula. So they're, they're, the fundamentals are really, really good. And what I'm excited about is this project can deliver impact um, to the city of Baltimore and really create a new model for public-private partnerships across the country. Now, I know there's another thing that people are talking about as far as green energy and as far as reusable energy. Is that something that, as far as the Baltimore project or other projects, that you see a new use for land? I am fond of saying that if you're in the real estate business, you're in the energy business in 2023. You know that Local Law 97 and Local Law 154 has really created a new um, set of rules in New York City and the same conditions and the same opportunities exist outside of New York. Let's take Baltimore, for example. The state of Maryland imports over 60% of its energy from neighboring states, and it's very expensive to do that. And so the Baltimore Peninsula project sits on two and a half miles of waterfront. It has access to a, a viable and um, expandable substation with BG&E, and it's a landmass that can accommodate um, lots of different uses. And so I'm super focused on offshore wind because of the proximity to um, the sea and the fact that we have the ability to power up the kind of cables that come from the ocean to really uh, deliver renewable energy to cities. And here in New York, we're building all of our buildings um, after this building fully electric. And that's something that w is the future. Um, not everybody's doing it. Some people are just hoping that the city kicks the can on that. But I see the future as um, a future that's defined by carbon neutral, passive house, and um, all electric buildings. And we have a very old and sick building stock. You know, the average age of a New York City office building is over 73 years of age. This does not make us a 21st century city. So many of us in the industry only do um, 
innovative things when we're made to do it. And so these energy requirements that are being uh, imposed upon the industry are going to drive innovation. And I want to be on the forefront of that. So my strategic plan for the next few years um, has energy as a, as a centerpiece, really, so that every building we build, we can be proud of. Because this is not a, a moral imperative. This is what customers want. People want to live in healthy buildings. Um, people who are building headquarter buildings want to use sustainable materials. And energy is a very big part of that. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mayor. It's a pleasure. <laughs>